Hello, my name is Derek Kinder, and I'm a hydraulic engineer with the Risk Management Center. In this video, we are going back to discuss two RMC RFA analyses, starting stage duration and empirical frequency curve. This lecture will cover the last two analyses in RMC RFA, reservoir starting stage duration and empirical frequency curve. We will start with reservoir starting stage duration. The objective of this lecture is to understand how to perform reservoir starting stage duration analysis and how it will be used to inform the loading curve. Most of us are familiar with a stage duration curve that represents the percent of time the reservoir stage is above a given stage. Duration curves are typically calculated for seasonal, monthly, or annual time periods. Here we are trying to find the monthly reservoir starting stage duration, which will be used to sample the initial stage for a reservoir routing simulation based on the sampled month in which the flood event occurs. Here's what the monthly stage duration curves may look like. Reservoir starting stage duration curves represent the percent of time during which antecedent reservoir stages are exceeded. This plot is the result of an analysis where the observed daily stage data is filtered before calculating the duration curves. The user input daily stage gauge data is shown in blue and the filtered stage data is shown in red. As you can see in the example, most of the largest peak stages have been removed from the stage data. The filtering of the stage data is performed to remove flood events from the starting stage data set. To add a new starting stage duration analysis, right click on the analysis tab or select one from the drop down menu. You'll enter a name, a description, and then enter the analysis parameters. There are three parameters to select for a reservoir starting stage duration analysis. The first is a stage gauge selected from a drop down menu from your previously entered stage gauge input data. A representative period of record for current operations should typically be used. We don't want to use stage data that is not representative of the conditions we are assuming for our risk assessment. Pool change threshold represents the maximum rate of rise per day. Pool changes that exceed this threshold are identified as flood events and the stage data is excluded from the analysis. Having this threshold allows the starting pool elevation to be populated from daily elevations, excluding the flood events where the pool rises faster than the threshold. To estimate this threshold, examine a year of stages representing a typical year. First, inspect the period of record. Choose a year and inspect the stage hydrographs from that year. You can then estimate a typical rate of pool change per day associated with flood events and non-flood events. It may be beneficial to review several years before selecting a threshold value. This can be done by visual inspection in RFA and using Excel or a similar tool to calculate the daily change in stage. Note that setting the pool change threshold to zero will result in no filtered stage data. The stage duration curves will be constructed using all of the data from the stage gauge. What is the duration of a typical flood? That is the question we must answer to get the high pool duration parameter. Again, let's look to the data. Look at the stage hydrograph for several flood events and estimate how many days the pool remains high. Be sure to look at several event hydrographs. This duration does not have to match our critical inflow duration because we are looking at the period of time that the stage stays high, not the duration of the inflow hydrograph or the time to peak stage. For this example, we examined multiple high pool events. Shown here is the June 2013 event, which had a high stage duration of about 28 days. Next, enter the pool change threshold and the typical high pool duration and click compute. After computing, the stage gauge plot is populated and the stage data table is as well. In the stage data table, you can see that there is the stage and then the starting stage. The starting stage are the selected values that go into the final duration curves. 
highlighted is an example of some of the filtered stages where some days of the stage have been removed based on the pool change threshold and the typical high pool duration parameters. Under the second tab of the plot is where we can see the computed monthly duration curves. This example project has relatively consistent pools throughout the year. Dams with large seasonal fluctuations in pool can have a much greater variation in the duration curves. RFA took the starting stage data for the reservoir and computed percent of time that each stage was exceeded per month. Duration curves are typically developed using observed daily average stage data. Stages are shown on the vertical axis and the percent of time exceeded is shown on the horizontal axis. We can toggle on and off different months in order to inspect individual curves more closely. Here I have May and December turned on. I can see that December has a lower pool than May for most of the time until you get to below 2% exceedance and December has higher pools. The tabular results are calculated values used to generate the duration curve plots. If you so desire, you can manually enter duration curves by right-clicking and selecting Allow Manual Data Entry. This is generally not needed, but is an option that is sometimes used to evaluate the sensitivity to the starting stage. Recall that RFA first samples the month when the flood event occurs using the flood seasonality analysis. RFA then samples a starting reservoir stage based on the duration curve for that month. For example, if RFA selects the month of May for a simulation iteration, then the corresponding reservoir starting stage duration curve for May is used to sample a starting stage for the reservoir routing computation. The final analysis in RFA is the empirical frequency curve. The objective of this lecture is to understand how to perform empirical frequency curve analysis and how it will be used to inform the loading curve. The empirical frequency curve analysis can be performed on stage or inflow. This curve is created by ranking the annual maximum data in descending order, assigning the data a plotting position, and then plotting the data. Similar to all new windows in RMC RFA, you start with a name and a description. Then we move on to the parameters. The first two parameters are relatively self-explanatory. Select a gauge type. In this instance, I used a stage gauge. After you have a gauge type, the gauges of that type are available from the drop-down menu under the select gauge. The duration is a bit trickier. If your gauge is an inflow hydrograph, you should use the critical inflow duration because we want to use the volume for the same critical duration to compute the empirical flow frequency curve. If the gauge is a stage gauge, the duration should be set to one day because we want to use the daily stages to calculate the annual maximum empirical stage frequency curve. For this example, the duration is one day because we're using a stage gauge. Unless you have a reason to use a different plotting position formula, use Weibull, which is the default. Two other plotting positions are available, Median and Hazen. These formulas compute the exceedance probability of a data point based on the rank in a sample of a given size. The year specification can be water year, which is the default, or the calendar year. This allows you to define the beginning and ending date for the analysis. Make sure to choose a year specification that captures all of the flood events for that time period. For example, if the flood season typically occurs in the spring and summer, then a calendar year starting on January 1st specification could be sufficient to capture those events. However, if the flood season occurs in the fall and winter, then a water year starting on October 1st specification might better capture those events. Once you hit compute, the tabular results will plot and are populated. The empirical frequency curve will be available to display with the simulation results. This can help to calibrate the model to make sure that the model prediction is similar to actual observed events. The empirical frequency curve analysis in RMC RFA has some limitations. Plotting positions can only be calculated for a continuous record. 
If you have historic stage or flow information, her Steddinger plotting positions can be calculated for stage or flow using the RMC Best Fit software. A plot showing these plotting positions on the stage or flow frequency curves would then need to be manually created outside of RMC RFA. You should now have an understanding of empirical frequency curves, how to compute the analysis in RMC RFA, and how to use them in the RMC RFA software.